Hey, everybody, and welcome to Views on View. I'm Chris Fritz. I'm from the ViewCore team. And today in our panel, we have Ben Hong, View contributor and uh, educator. Hey. We have Ari Clark, a new panelist for the very first time. And, and Ari, we haven't talked about this yet. How should we do your introduction? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> we had her on the other week, and she is a, a View developer. And uh, something we really, really enjoyed having her on is the the questions that, that she was able to ask and and her comfort with like asking questions and, and getting to the core of, or, of issues. That's something we definitely need in, in panelists on the podcast. And so we, we really appreciate you helping us out here. Y'all are making me blush. <laughs> <laughs> and also, as one of our guests today, is Jen Looper, because you may hear some background noise. We are live, live from Refactor during a View Vixens workshop. Wow, that's really exciting. I'm really happy to be on this podcast and um, again, and I'm excited to kind of get some more people in here and, and ask some questions. So Ari, you can also ask Ari questions to the yeah. people who are attending the workshop. We'll get some feedback like live right away. <laughs> And Jen, you're the CEO and founder of View Vixens, right? Yep, that's right. We were founded um, a little over a year ago. So yeah, it's been a pretty wild ride and pretty, pretty, pretty fun. We've had a good time. Hey folks, I just want to let you know quickly about Netlify. Netlify is a really cool system for hosting what are traditionally known as static sites. However, the real benefit that I've been finding is that I don't have to mess with a back end. I can just set things up. I build the website out. I've been using a system called 11DJS and you just deploy it. And then anything that you have that you want to do, you can do on the front end. So if you want to pull in some kind of database with Firebase or something else, if you want to collect form data, Netlify provides all kinds of services that make it easy to do all that stuff. If you're trying to do serverless, they have a really, really neat serverless setup that will allow you to deploy your websites without having to deploy a backend and it'll do some of the work for you. I just I just love it. So if you're looking for a way that you can actually deploy a website that only has front end technology in it, gives you all the tools that you typically need for the back end without having to actually program the back end, then give them a try. Go check them out at netlify.com. Can you give us a little bit of like uh, the history in a second? But first, so what is View Vixens for people who haven't heard of it? Mm -hmm. View Vixens was um, modeled after NG Girls, the Angular Girls version of this kind of project, which is echoed in a lot of other open source communities. Um, there's Pi Ladies and R Ladies and lots of ladies. We wanted to make a community space for people who identify as women to learn View, to get involved in the community, and to um, to feel comfortable joining us to just build something completely new and fresh within the community. We do two things. We do workshops. So we will travel from conference to conference doing free workshops. Our workshops are always free and they're always for people who identify as women. And we also have meetups that our chapter leaders take care of. So we have about 20 chapters worldwide and um, people will uh, join a local chapter to do a fun meetup, uh, to, to learn, to, to meet with other speakers, to network and to learn Vue.js, which is our great love. That's great. And I think uh, some big news recently I believe you were just approved for 501c3 status. Is that true? Yes, I have done all the paperwork. <laughs> so that means people who donate to View Vixens can actually make that tax deductible. Yes, tax deductible donations. And that's actually very, very helpful, I think, for a lot of people, corporate sponsors as well. We have, mm -hmm. um, if you go to viewvixens.org, you can get more information about sponsorships. But it's a really cool way to... Um, to support the community. And every penny, I promise you, goes either to our chapters in one bank account or for scholarships in the other bank account. So <laughs> I keep the books and I keep them good. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'd, I'd be kind of curious to hear a little bit of the history of you, Vixens. Like, how, like what made you decide to do it? What, what made you decide, like, you know, this is something I need to do. This is something I need to make. And this is why there's a need for it. Well, it, it comes from a, a place of great embarrassment on my part. <laughs> Um, I was coming out of the Angular community, so I've had um, kind of deep integration with uh, the, the really terrific community that uh, that formulated around Angular, and in particular, NG Girls, which was founded by Shmuala, who is um, a lovely lady in Israel. And uh, she founded this thing where you, you can go and in a day-long workshop, learn Angular. They build a to-do app. I think they still are doing this workshop, um, and it's over a full day. Well, I was leading NG Girls in Paris. And I got horribly lost <laughs> in, in the workshop. So that taught me a couple things about giving workshops and what I need to do for my own sanity. But 
basically, it just struck me, aside from the embarrassment and pain of that story, <laughs> that um, this is a great model that is scalable across all kinds of different communities. I mean, obviously, um, NG Girls was inspired actually by Django Girls, which is a hugely successful um, same sort of initiative. So I thought, well, Vue.js doesn't have this yet. It's a new community. Let's do it. Let's just build. Let's just try and see if we can launch such a thing. So I just announced it on the stage of Vue Amsterdam in 2018. All I had at that point was a logo, which was cute, and uh, a website, which was not so cute. And um, Was it really only founded last year? Yeah, 2018. Wow. I know. It's always scaled. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah it, it feels like wow. I know. It feels like forever. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, so I just got up there and launched. And I've, I realized as I speak about this initiative, I can, I'm a mobile developer. I'm a developer uh, advocate. So I can talk about product until I'm blue in the face. But when I mention View Vixens, the girls rush the stage, you know? So this happens over and over again. People get excited and they want to join kind of an affirming kind of community like this. So, and it's, it's also attracted a great number of, uh, of allies and friends like our friend Chris here and Ben. And um, it's, uh, it's been really a great way to just... Um, Create community, which is what, after all, we're here for. We're in open source and we're here for the community. So it's been a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely appreciate the, the positive contributions you make to our community and culture. <laughs> Likewise, core team is awesome. <laughs> cool. And we also have Diana Rodriguez here, who I'll be, I'll be fetching in a second. And what is her role in, in View Vixens while I, while I go and get her? Right. Well, Diana and my, my CTO, Natalia, were instrumental in the creation of the initiative. Um, without all of us three, none of this would be happening because, and I wrote about this uh, on Dev2, there's an article I wrote calling Building a Tech Team the Emerald Cities Way. So I tend to look at us as, you know, if, if I'm Dorothy leading a team, you need your tin man, <laughs> you know, who, who has the heart and you need this, the, the scarecrow who is the uh, who has the brain. So if Natalia is the scarecrow, then Diana is the tin wood, wood person. <laughs> so she's the heart of, of, of the community. And she is my worldwide community organizer. Without Diana, we wouldn't have the footprint that we do in Latin America. She's actually from Venezuela. I met her when I went to Argentina uh, for our very first View Vixens Day. And that was just a life-changing experience for me to see that the the level of engagement that we can very specifically get in LATAM, in Latin America. So it's been a really awesome and cool thing to just watch this woman build communities because she is, that is her superpower. She has got people skills that I certainly do not have. And uh, I have huge admiration for Diana and here she is. <laughs> Cheers. I heard my name. Or oh, your ears burning. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about your role in, uh, in the initiative and uh, how you have been instrumental in building community, especially in Latam. Oh, cheers. <laughs> so you can talk about our chapters. Well, yeah, I like people. I like talking to people. And I think for this community, we wanted to make a difference. So that sense of being familiar and reachable, you know, like Jen is a CEO and then people think, oh, a CEO, like, how do I get to this person? And just DM me on know, Twitter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we have to be at that level, right? In Latin America, there are wonderful developers. Um, there are lots of communities, and we just wanted to to sort of give this amazing women a voice and send the correct message. You know, um, it's not that we're chopping heads off. You know, it's not that we hate men and we believe that only women will rule the earth because that's not fair and that's not cool, right? So. We started with Argentina and we created one of the best things that ever happened to us, mm -hmm. the View Vixens Day. And we show the community who we are and we share with them. And then we had a ladies on that, like a women and those one and if I search only space. And that model actually turned out to be like really good. We had attendance, like we we didn't expect so many people to turn to turn in and the age ranges were between 13 and 72 year olds mm -hmm. they had grandma <laughs> yeah we had wow. a grandma so after that it was just a master of reaching out to other countries in South America and now we have Colombia for example the two biggest cities Medellin and Bogota organizing View Vixens Days to get the people to you know to know who we are and to include us 
in this huge community participation because that's what we want to do. You know, we just want to get everyone involved knowing that, in fact, yeah, those who benefit from it are, uh, you know, women and those who identify as such, but it doesn't mean that, you know, we are secluding ourselves. It's not, it's not a pink corral like I said that, <laughs> you know, before. It's basically getting all these ladies who are amazing, who need, um, I don't know, friends with the same mindset to be, you know, trained and befriended and to be inserted with confidence in the global ecosystem. So we all have a, a space to sit, you know, at a table. That's basically what we're aiming for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I talk a lot. <laughs> yeah, we, we focus at the, on the beginners, but we also, I wanted to make sure that this initiative also takes care of mid-career people because there's an awful lot of attrition mid-career. People just get fed up. That's true. And I think that this is something that we're a little unique with. Um, our, our Slack area is, you know, populated with people in all in all areas of their career. You know, I'm, I'm reaching towards late mid to late career myself and it's easy to get a little little tired so it's kind of cool to see you know you can you can mentor a beginner but then you can also you know commiserate with the- <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know I've had like we've had beginners solve a, a few issues in our code help channel you know yeah. like just bring fresh ideas like yeah I've been in this industry for 18 years and sometimes I just you know there are things I don't know how to deal with or I'm too jaded because of this thing Jen was mentioning, and then we have, you know, fresh blood, <laughs> <laughs> fresh ideas, you know, yeah. new brains, more elastic, you know. And, and people who are and isn't there a research now that like the blood of the young actually keeps us? No, we're not going down this road. We're not going down this road. It's not you vampires. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, but the other kind of cool thing we we do get not so much, so they're like mid career, but they're beginning in view. So it's kind of interesting. They're coming from other groups. They're coming from a Python background or a Java background. That's true. Um, I actually particularly love it when I have people coming to our workshop who are completely outside the field. We had um, chemical engineers in Greece. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and they and they slam that workshop. You know, they get through it. I love it. We And then they'll be sitting next to some experienced React developer who's trying to learn to use. So it's really kind of, it's real interesting. And they, they all give us, you know, interesting feedback of what, what they're looking to learn and how, how they learn best. So it's really cool. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Could you guys talk a little bit about how you have cultivated such an amazing community in your Slack channel? Because the internet is, can be a very dark place and making sure that you have this bright sunny spot can't be easy. So I actually am coming from a, uh, having experience monitoring really large Slack channels monitor the native script uh, Slack, which is over 10,000 people. And uh, I think like, uh, like they say in Harry Potter is constant vigilance. You know, <laughs> you, you do need to be on top of these spaces. You can't, this whole business of set it and forget it will not work. It will not work. You have to um, monitor and you also have to scale yourself. So it can't just be you. So like we have um, a whole monitors group in, um, in View Vixens just to make sure that we know what's going on mm-hmm. and, uh, and who's there and that everybody's cool. And, you know, knock on wood, we really haven't had any issues. Cool thing is whatever has come to, you know, to our attention has been handled in, in a really nice way. It's like we're watching over each other, you know, and it's not just our job. It's a, it's a very nice community. We all watch each other's backs. You know that. <laughs> you know that. It's my favorite Slack channel. Which, which one is? Oh, uh, I mean the moaning channel, but... Oh, the moaning channel. <laughs> <laughs> I personally <laughs> like, like pets, you know. <laughs> I also love wins. I like being able to celebrate people's wins. I mean, everyone feels good from that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> Um, I know one of the policies I really like that you all have been like enforcing is that um, when people do join, um, that they are encouraged to actually have a profile picture and actually introduce themselves. So it prevents like the random stragglers who are like just lurking sort of underneath the surface. And I feel like that has helped to prevent these sort of like trolls and that kind of thing from becoming an issue. Yeah, I think um, a true pro pick and your full name um, on the uh, on the name that you're listed as. We have a little app called Donut. I don't know how well it's working, but it was in, I was encouraged to install it. So when you come into as a new person into our Slack channel, Donut, the bot, 
gives you, you know, a little welcome message and a little onboarding. And then we have a friends channel. And if you join that, Donut will pair you randomly with a friend. And then you can um, do one-on-ones with that person. It, it'll switch every other, other week or something like that. Um, so there's a lot of, you know, cool bots that are useful in Slack spaces that I, I really appreciate them. I think they're great. Yeah, I've met like five or six people through the donut thing. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I haven't actually experienced it myself because, like, because I was just administering it. But I, I, I'm glad to hear that it seems to be working okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel like I should try it. Eek. <laughs> Hop into friends. <laughs> yeah, I've met some great people through that already. Good. Great. So one of the things I, I wanted to use this for is an opportunity to uh, get to know the stories of some of the people who you know, take part in Hugh Vixen's workshops as well, you know, hear how they learned about Vue and, you know, how their introduction to Vue has been and things like that. I also, since the workshop is actually going on right now, I don't want to take Diana for too much longer because she's one of the mentors in the workshop. <laughs> so we'll be, we'll be right back with, uh, with volunteer to uh, talk to us a little bit about their story coming into Vue and maybe coming into development. In the meantime, y'all can talk about something. <laughs> <laughs> amongst yourselves. <laughs> it's great to talk to you. Um, yeah. I'm a big fan of, of Ben, so... Just Ben? <laughs> wow. Whoa, whoa. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. I have to say serious hand, uh, hand hearts to, <laughs> to Ben for being one of my most favorite men in the entire world and... <laughs> Ari, we're friends, you know. So we just disrespect each other. <laughs> exactly. You know? It's like we're friends. <laughs> it's the same with Jen and I. She's my CEO, but we're friends and we have our friendly protocols, you know. Yeah. It's like, you know. It's a lot of dirty jokes and no barriers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you will never see that. <laughs> all right, all right. Before, uh, before... Before this turns into a not very friendly, a family friendly podcast. Uh, <laughs> Have a great one. People. All right, you too. Enjoy the workshop. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ari, if I'm not mistaken, I think you'll be running the Skulk at Connect Tech. Yeah, uh, apparently I found that out the other day. <laughs> That's the thing. If you if you if you stick your hand up, <laughs> I'll grab you. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. I was like, hey, I'm going to be there. Do you need help? She was like, actually, yeah. Do you want to run it? I was like, yeah, exactly. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maria will be there and um, probably other other good people as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I believe Chris DeMars um, has offered to help out. If oh, good. Can. Awesome. Yeah, super. Yeah. yeah, I'll be at Connect Tech as well. Um, I'm still figuring out whether I might be helping to run the intro view one, but if not, I will totally... Uh, oh, it's okay. We don't need you, Ben. No. <laughs> right. Fine. I see how it is. Oh. Okay. Of course we need you <laughs> if you're available. Um, are you going to All Things Open? Is anyone going to do All Things Open? I don't, I don't think I submitted to that. I think I missed the deadline for that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Maria's going to run. That was, one of, that was actually our very largest workshop. It was funny. It's a model that also works as the breakfast workshop. So we just had a, um, everybody grab breakfast. And then in, a, in an hour, you got a mobile app. So wow. Was, <laughs> we had like 35 people. It was, it was crazy. It was really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then for those listening, um, you know, if you know someone that uh, you think would be a great fit as far as like getting involved and like would be a great community leader, I know that Jen and Diana are always looking for, you know, new chapter leaders to help lead, you know, initiatives. Yeah. Just, you know, hop in, uh, hop in the Slack channel and we'll, we'll pair you up. Uh Uh-oh. I see someone familiar coming Uh up. Oh. Is this live right now? (laughs) Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's not live, live. It's (laughs) It's being recorded. (laughs) Great. Recorded live. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Tessa. Yes. Um, I'm here. We're talking about food. No. Korean barbecue. The KBBQ. Oh, uh, this is the wrong podcast. The podcast. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Just checking. That's the pod crunch. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tessa, do you want to introduce yourself to, the, uh, yes. to, our, to our audience? I am Tessa Merrill, and I am a developer advocate at Cloudinary. I just started there a few months ago, so I have a lot of new things I'm learning, and I'm absolutely loving it. Cloudinary is an absolutely brilliant company. Mass props. Yes. <laughs> I didn't know you had only been working there for, for a short time. Uh, I was at Cisco Systems for quite a few years prior to that. Oh, 
So nice. they did a good job recruiting me and, and getting me to choose their company out of um, <laughs> other options that I had going on. So they're, they're really great. And the team is wonderful. And that's definitely more important than anything else is being happy with the people you're working with. That is absolutely true. Should I go ahead and ask a couple questions? Yeah, absolutely. Go for it. All right. I have questions, Tessa. Oh, dear. No. <laughs> <laughs> One hour of sleep. I can do this. Oh, no. I'm feeling confident. <laughs> oh, could you not sleep? Oh, you had the, the long uh, trip. And I then. just, just some nights that I, I struggled to sleep, but that's just my life. Yeah. I just, I, I do a lot of things and a lot of events, a lot of stuff, a lot of work, a lot of everything. And my brain doesn't have like an offline mode. There's like no off button. Yeah. But it's great because I get a lot of things done just because true. of that. <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately we all do need our sleep. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I wanted to ask you as, um, now, I know Cloudinary has a big footprint in the Vue ecosystem, so they yes. will do a lot with Vue. And were you, in, were you a Vue developer before you came to Cloudinary, or um, what is your relationship to Vue? I am actually completely new to Vue, but I've been kind of like cramming and learning uh, at a very fast and quick pace. Uh, it was only like maybe two months ago where we decided we're, we have a we're sponsoring and doing a lot with the view community. It's a, it's a smaller community and the boss says that they, he believes that, you know, view is going to um, go big and be more um, adopted by developers. And it's also the number one rated JavaScript framework on GitHub, um, number one starred framework. And it's, it's getting up there. And for us to be able to, just support the community and be involved in every way we can. We're just trying to find more unique and more interesting ways to be involved and just be supportive and, and be part of the growth for the view community. That's super. And, and it touches, I'm, I'm a huge, you know, fan and, and, and passionate about developer communities. So that definitely touches my heart. And I'm like, I will, I will help in any way I can. Like, oh, we need someone who wants to volunteer to be part of the view community. Like, oh, me, why not? That's awesome. And uh, my back, back, background in development is all um, back end, and, and it's definitely a big difference. Oh, yeah. And it's just a, so much simplicity to especially a front end framework. And I'm now a huge advocate for that. Like, why aren't you learning? You have to know this. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. So, coming from a, a back end development background, mm. um, What's your impression of the front end scene? You know, I know that we all have love for Vue.js, but like if you're a new developer, would you recommend just like jumping right on into to Vue for your front end or what, what, what options? Brand new developer, I would always suggest understanding and learning the core concepts of JavaScript because the framework's kind of like, how is all this magic happening? You have to understand like the behind the scenes of all of that first. And then, you know, once you understand the, the concepts and the basics, then you can learn any framework. Like if you just have a background in React, you can still get a job in Vue as long as you're capable of learning. And we're all here because we can learn very well. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a great uh, um, viewpoint. I was wondering uh, how you're, just to change gears a little bit, how you're enjoying the workshop so far. I'm loving it. And it has a very nice user experience feel to it. I can just jump straight to the next part. Oh, if you fall behind, you can just you know, copy the GitHub URL and then you get caught right back on and it gets into the details and you get to work in a sandbox where you can see everything changing and, and happening live. And it's, it makes it fun to like want to go to the next step. I think that's one of the great um, aspects of using Code Sandbox. So all of our workshops are either done in Code Sandbox or the NativeScript Playground, which is a similar sandbox type of environment. Um, for mobile development. And um, it makes everything extremely magical in an in a almost frightening fashion, you know, especially coming from, you know, I'm coming from a crusty cold fusion background, believe it or not. Ooh. LOL. I know, right? <laughs> it's Oracle stored procedures. And Fun. there's not much magic going on there. <laughs> so um, it's kind of interesting to, to see these, these new front end, front end frameworks and how they, you know, how they just make your life just so much easier. Mm -hmm. And then working in a sandboxed environment for, for learning is brilliant. I think this is like the great innovation of the last couple of years. Definitely. Yeah. What, what I find interesting, I just started the Vue Meetup in Seattle a few months ago and it, and it grew quite quickly. 
enough where I'm having like three view meetups in the month of June. I'm wow. really crazy to wow. do that. Wow. Um, That's impressive. <laughs> I, it's supposed to be one per month. I don't know what happened to something. It's the um, Tessa magic fairy something's dust. Something's wrong in my brain. <laughs> uh, but big portion of the attendees there are switching their framework from a different, from either, you know, a lot of them is React. They're switching out of React to use Vue because they hear great things about it. They feel like there's, you know, more flexibility and easier to work with. So they're all really excited to just make some major changes at their company. And it's it's fascinating. I love hearing everyone's story in, in the meetups. That's interesting. So I run the Boston Vue.js meetup with Kristen. We've got a lot of interest Everyone wants to come, but I have trouble finding speakers. So I'm just going to shamelessly plug. If you're in Boston and you're anywhere near Vue, please come <laughs> and speak at the Boston Vue Jam. And Ben, you, you run Vue um, DC, is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, it, luckily DC has a fairly good uh, tech community. So we've had a decent amount of speakers kind of coming in and out. And we run Code Lab. So yeah, once a month is pretty good for us. Uh, three is really impressive. We still haven't hit those numbers so- yet. There's a little a background to that. Um, one of them, I just ran a meetup on Monday, two days ago. I lose track of time. I started a, a hack day, a view hacking day. So it gives me the time to commit to writing code, which nice. is it's hard when you're a developer advocate and being everywhere and doing everything. Like this is like the time slot of four hours. I think I do like four hour events. So in two weeks, we're going to meet again for that and then talk about what we're learning or maybe learning, going through some tutorials or building something or finishing yeah. a project. And then the last week of June, a friend is flying up to Seattle and really wants to attend a view meetup really bad. <laughs> oh, <laughs> custom, and, custom job there. <laughs> yeah. And I say yes to everything. I'm like, okay, great idea. I'll throw up a view meetup and then we can go. <laughs> that's amazing. So that's the third one. Wow. <laughs> so it just kind of all just happens by itself uh, unintentionally. Do you run your hack nights on like a weekday evening or like what time slot do you normally do for those? Uh, 6 to 9 p.m. 6 to 10 p.m. Oh, okay, 6 to 10. 10 okay. PM. And we're going to meet at a burger joint so we can eat dinner. I was looking for a place with big tables where mm-hmm. we can all sit together and, and that's known to to have that availability for uh, groups from 15 to 30 people. So this is perfect. So how do they, how do they hack together? Is it like you give them a project and then they work on it in sandbox or VS code or however they so want? The, or? Our last one, everyone was kind of working on random stuff, but I'm going to do something different for the next one. And I'm going to provide projects for them. Mm. Just some, something random made up. My boss, Doron is very creative mm-hmm. and always has, fresh ideas within yeah. like two seconds of time. So I might consult with him. Mm. <laughs> Please share and, these things. <laughs> we really want your ideas. <laughs> and we're going to probably, and, and Cloudinary is really great with sponsoring everything that I'm involved with. So they're probably going to sponsor some prizes and maybe give out prizes for doing something interesting with Vue and maybe media management. And I think the last time we were, we met at a Starbucks and his idea was like, how about they change the homepage of the Starbucks website in Seattle and, and switch out the media and just make the page run a lot faster wow. than how it currently runs just to show how easy it is to optimize um, websites. Nice. Yeah. That's a great idea. They, um, there's a, a group called Uplabs. I, I guess Uplabs. And they have these kind of coding challenges that they're constantly spinning up. So maybe that could be inspiration for us. You yes. Know, redo the WhatsApp interface, you know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> it's good fun. And it's nice to have these kind of greenfielded projects where everybody can just start instead of like going back into the weeds of their day job. I, yeah. I like, I like and, and there's always going to be people that have nothing that they can work on, but want to participate. So that would be perfect for them. Mm-hmm. And I've noticed other people mentioning in the meetup group saying, oh, I'm working on this project. I'm looking for people to contribute or, or consult with me. And that would be a perfect meetup to attend where she can talk to others and, and maybe um, do some pair programming or something. Yeah. We also find it, um, the meetups are a really great place for people to um, find jobs. I mean, I, this is kind of yeah. like the traditional thing, but I think we've had some really, we have a couple companies who are like solidly in the view space in Boston. So they're, it's nice that they, they've always been real supportive of us. Um, one of them, Path AI, just um, became our first silver sponsor. 
So that's really cool. Oh, I love yeah. that. <laughs> that That's why it's always important to have like that 30 minute or one hour slot before and after the meetup for, for a chance for everyone to talk to each other and network. And at the end, I always see people, you know, because people intro each other at the beginning, they know what companies they're from and they know if they're hiring or not. And then at the end, they're exchanging business cards and, and wanting to link up. And it's, it's a really good feeling to feel like, you know, this is... I, I made this happen and, and community is, is becoming a thing and people are going places. I mean, a meetup could change someone's life. Mm-hmm. It absolutely can. Yeah. Um, another thing we like to do, or I like to do is um, themed meetups. So like for Valentine's day, we had view Valentine's day for view leavers, you know, it kind of went on and on with the horrible puns because that's what our community is known for. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, we had and we had the guy. He he, he live coded a whole Valentine's interface. Like it was astounding. But you could do a lot with like the wow. the code kata type things around wow. a theme. So our meetup in in July is going to be a cruise. So we're going to do the love boat. I don't know. I haven't figured this all out. I need to get a, a costume. I need an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Another onesie, Jen. Oh yeah, something. I was thinking more like sailor suit or something. <laughs> Love the onesie. <laughs> Eventually, a shark onesie. Yeah, baby shark. Yes. Oh yeah, baby shark. There we go. <laughs> oh, thank you, Ben. I needed that. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can do like a like an interface for that silly song with some animation. There we go. <laughs> That'd be fun. But uh, speaking of meetups changing people's lives, I will say like, so we tried to record our meetup talks or sorry, we, re- we asked speakers if they're okay with it being recorded and we tried to put them up on YouTube. And one person actually got a job offer based on that recording. Wow. And like, it's on like a whole new career direct- trajectory. So it's really incredible how these small things, because again, like I think the YouTube channel has like 10 followers. Like it's small, but like, it's one of those things where like his recording got sawn by like some CEO saw it, was impressed and offered him a job based on that video. So outstanding. That, Pretty incredible. That's a little in- encouragement for me. I've been asked too many times to count that. Um, can you record the view meetup? I Same. really love to watch. Yeah. I really need to do that. What about live streaming? Because I like I have folks in Nigeria who've mentioned they'd love to attend a Boston ViewJS meetup, and I'm like, I'm not even sure how. <laughs> yeah, I would. Um, I would talk to Guillaume actually. So Livestorm, I think, is the one he recommends oh, um, nice. for live streaming because I've had mixed results with like Google Hangouts and stuff with people not being able to actually join properly. Mm -hmm. So I would check out Livestorm um, for that. That's something we're still experimenting with. But at the bare minimum, recording with something like ScreenFlow is, I think, I think ScreenFlow is the one I would recommend. Yeah. That way you record this, like, you know, whatever's on their presenter screen and the person actually talking. So, but yeah, I totally recommend that as long as the speaker's okay with it, recording it um, seems to have been a great thing for us so far. Great. Yeah. Now I have to remember that. Yeah, lots of tips. that's a good start. Tips and tricks, and then and then move up towards video recording, recording later on. There you go. <laughs> All right. So if this would be an okay time, we actually have our next vixen up here, Ooh. Yvonne. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank, thank you very you. much, Tessa. Thanks, Tessa. Thanks, Tessa. Talk to you all soon. Talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, later. go ahead and take a seat. Thank you so much for volunteering to sit on the hot seat with us. <laughs> Hello. Hi. So this is Ben and Ari over there. It's hard to see the names, but um, Hi. Yeah. can you see me? Am I just adorable? Yeah, you're good. So um, you spell your name Y. Mm-hmm. So my middle name is Yvonne with an E. Oh. So <laughs> we have yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so fun. Yeah. So, well, thank you so much again for coming to chat with us. I guess we're asking some questions about your experience. Your, your story of how you're coming into Vue.js, um, whether you're coming from a different background or whether you're an experienced developer or? Um, so I currently now do AngularJS at my, at my job with NCR. And I'm trying to help us move to Angular set, well, Angular 8. That's 8 already, okay. Yeah, it's 8 already. <laughs> yeah, I know. They keep popping them out yeah. there. But I wanted to, because I, you know, Jen, um, I don't know if you know Jennifer Bland, yeah, she's she's really big um, as far as the the women who code community and in as a view a view developer. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, um, in, in the workshop is free, so it's give me a good opportunity to experience, get kind of get my feet wet with the framework without you know just kind of try it before you buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and also just being at home and getting stuck a lot because mm-hmm. you don't already have the experience. So doing a workshop, a a, a instructor led workshop. 
and and being around other developers, you can if you get question, have questions, you can get them answered quicker than if you're at home and you're trying to slack overflow it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I can get I can get my feet wet quicker, faster, and just kind of see what it's all about before you know with without you know the trials and errors of doing it by yourself at home. Oh wow! So um, you're the story of transitioning from angular js straight into Vue is very um is a very typical one it's very interesting and i'm just wondering if you feel um similarities if you're finding similarities of the feel because i i always liked angular js as well um, yeah so i did um so just comparison how brains work so we always try to a brain always try to learn by comparing to something that it already knows so i did like a, just a little teeny bit with um react not much at all to like say I know React at all, but so I'm being able to see differences, sorry, similarities in it with Angular, React, and I've heard it was just a combination, like it adds a little bit of both worlds in there as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm 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 seeing a lot and being able to kind of kind of relate a lot with the component architecture, of course, because they all use that, but also you know how to use state and how they call components is very similar to what I see in React, mm-hmm. but the having a, a bit of separation based off component is what I mostly see in Angular. Mm-hmm. So there is that that, that I'm, I'm noticing. Yeah, it's really interesting. So maybe you can tell us a little more about um, your your journey into tech, because I think a lot of us have like very traditional stories of the CS degree and, you know, like blast on through school. And then some of us have like non-traditional, I'm a French teacher, like by, by training, so. Um, Psychology. Psychology. Yeah. Mm. I'm one of those traditionals. I was lucky enough, I should say, to have taken um, some courses. Well, it was actually CCNA. So CCNA courses with like dealing with routers and technical support. What CCNA? Uh, sorry. So Cisco routers, so mm-hmm. certifications. Mm-hmm. You can, if you want to deal with like routing and, and ad- network administration, mm-hmm. you can take some Cisco routing classes and mm-hmm. courses and they call them like CCNA and they have all of the acronyms and yeah. names. <laughs> Um, but I took those actually in college, I'm saying high school, mm. and I was lucky enough to get interviewed to be in the class and I got in. That kind of pushed me on to further on to knowing like, okay, I want to do this in IT because when I was younger, I did like a tech camp because um, I was like, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to be actually quite early on in like ninth grade. Yeah. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, I know it was something with computer because when I was younger, if I kind of backtrack that, we had the DOS. I don't know if, <laughs> I yeah. think a lot of us don't know, remember DOS, yeah, you know, yeah. DOS, DOS Macintosh Prince. computers, and it was just black and white <laughs> with the floppy disk, you know, and you can play those black and white games where it's kind of like, duh, 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 duh. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this one time I was at school and my friend did this like three, three button command on the keyboard and it just, it just turned the computer off. It just, <laughs> I was like, that's amazing. How did you do that? How did you do that? And I'm like, it was literally all delete. Oh, control all delete. But I mean, whatever you know, inspires us. If you were in elementary school back when, you know, and it was kind of like the awe, but it was control all delete. I'll tell you. Powered down the computer. And I was like, and it said, like, it had like a. At that point, it had like the big red sign, the at the gun stop sign. Oh, it said stop. And I swear to God, that was like my awe to Jesus moment. Like, <laughs> I want to do something with that thing there, this computer thing. And so ever since that moment, I was on the quest to find out what exactly do I want to be. It went from computer animation. I was like, I can't draw. Mm. It's like, oh, you know, what, what does it take to be a computer animator? You have to learn how to draw. I don't know how to draw anything besides stick figures. And those look bad. So (laughs) skipping. (laughs) Then I went to tech camp and I I learned some more. I got it. I got introduced to even more things in the IT field. And at the time I was like, I can, I like to fix and build things. So I was going with networking, but um, in tech support. But when I took a coding class, I was lucky enough to be introduced to a, my instructor, my teacher was just an amazing person. And she just, Wonderful. made me fall in love with coding because of her love of coding. Mm. And from then on, it was just like, I want to code. And even though I was coding in Java, and at the time it was Java 6, uh-huh, mm. and, <laughs> right? <laughs> just, uh, 
right? But it, it was very complicated. And, you know, when you're that that new to the game, semicolons are your problems. Mm-hmm. You can't remember to put them everywhere. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like mm-hmm. seriously, I for you, like you're coding, like you got like about 20 to 30 lines of code. And at the time, there was a lot of code because you're just starting out. You, gotta, you don't know how to recode at the time. And you're like, what is wrong? <laughs> and like, so we're going through the lines. This is back before you had great debuggers. Right. You had JGRASP. <laughs> and he, you know, it wasn't that great. And uh, you're, you're sitting there, and he's like, you're, you're going through line by line. It's like, oh, you're missing a colon, the semicolon. It's like, yeah. seriously, yeah. I've been at this for a day and a half over a semicolon. So um, my husband had the exact same experience, and he's a professor at MIT. He's learning Python right now, mm. and he 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 doesn't see like when he's pasting a line of code that the those are smart quotes that's yeah. not going to work but he doesn't see it he, yeah but it takes us, this the trained like eye yeah. it's really yeah. trained eye we don't realize like how we've been shaped our brains have been shaped by yeah it. so much but mm-hmm. lo, and, lo and behold that's kind of how I got into programming mm-hmm. because of a love of a teacher's love of programming if that's, that makes sense that's wonderful that's wonderful <laughs> it's just like watching the elevator <laughs> <laughs> I lost my train of thought do you think that kids Let's put on our old lady hats for a second. Do you think kids nowadays <laughs> with their iPads and iPhones since wow. age one and a half, mm-hmm. do they feel the same awe? Like what? I wonder, like, do they feel the same? Their awe isn't so simplistic, I, f- I would say. I think back in the, in the day, it wasn't like, the, it was the little things for us because we didn't have a lot, you know, it was, it was still advancing. Computers was personal computers technology was still advancing. We were just getting off of mainframes and coming over to personal computers. And it, it wasn't that much going on. But now they have things like AI. They have, yeah, maybe they have virtual that. reality. Yeah. So that's going to be their wow. Virtual reality, mm-hmm. augmented reality. Um, and then like just having programs start predicting stuff for you. That's going to be their all. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be ours, but it's, it's still theirs, you know. Yeah. So theirs is more on a grander scale than our control of the league, you know. Probably. They, don't, they don't get the pleasure of having such simple things be amazing. They That's have to right. this, this complicated thing. You have to learn so much. You, you can't just do a three key thing and be oh, like, oh, anymore, you know. <laughs> nope, you got you to gotta do all this programming and coding and learning and and a big Unity interface on top of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A little air of VR thrown on. <laughs> it's more grand scale now. Yeah. They, got, they got way more for all. I think the kids also enjoy the collaborative aspect and making friends, like, in the video games that are really collaborative and are interactive. Yeah. That's, that's the new thing that we did That is so, so new. Because yeah. my nephew, I, I go to see him sometimes in Virginia. And, you know, he's he's a big Minecraft guy. Yeah. And yeah. little kid, little Minecrafts and... And him and his his friends are, are trading worlds and doing all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, like, what? <laughs> You're like 13. And, and they're just all into it. They're doing way more at this point in time. But definitely, they love, like, talking to each other. Like, even though they see each other at school, it's like they get to not only create a world but be in that world yeah. and then collaborate within that world and get to be whoever they want to be maybe that's the trick yeah they're creating something that's uniquely there yeah, yeah. and they kind of embody it they just kind of go crazy with it they're like they're their character and then they start doing you know flossing and all yeah. <laughs> they're like making <laughs> photos and painting and yeah, the like, they, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. in jacuzzis and that thing i'm like <laughs> What? So I'm like in here just, in Minecraft. Yeah, I'm being a complete aunt. Like, what is that? That is so cool. Like, what is that? What are you doing there? Like, what are you? Oh, I'm just making a painting. I got to do the squares and the blacks and the whites and the and the, the triangles to make a painting. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> Making me seem like I'm just so old. I'm like, I have, I, I know games. I know games. I just don't know this. <laughs> That's hilarious. You gotta love the kids. Yeah, they're they're awesome. Their their future is. I feel limitless. Yeah. And they're they're getting introduced to it at a very younger age. So they're I feel like their possibilities are even way more than what we had growing up. Yeah, it's interesting. I think it's kind of traditional for the older generation to be kind of like, oh, those millennials, oh, the kids nowadays. I really hate that because I think they're going to fix all the screw-ups that we started. You know? At least try. <laughs> you know? At least try. Because yeah. like I think they most of them found interesting is just they get stopped at litigation. You know, I tried to do something with uh, uh, HIV and AIDS um, one time, and then I started getting to the aspect of the state and how the CDC works and how the state mitigates whether or not you can even put your product out and whether or not you're smart enough to read instructions and follow them. Uh And so, you know, they'll say, you know, you can try for this product and try to get this done, but 
you're going to be stopped at the state. Mm. Um, and then you have to get it approved at state levels, oh, each state. So mm. oh, wow. I feel like they have a lot of answers and they're going to, but it's just sometimes you're going to have to get past the get old rules. Yeah, you're going to yeah. yeah. get past those old rules. Yeah. The old people, they're the one crying, but like, <laughs> but Melina's like, I got the answer. It's like, we don't want it. <laughs> Well, actually, the um, so I work at Microsoft, and we just had Microsoft build, and you would have really enjoyed this whole area that we had for students. It was, I think, relatively new, but um, and it was called the uh, Imagine Cup. Mm-hmm. So all of these kids got together um, and and pitched ideas, and the one that won was a, a way to test for diabetes, I believe, mm-hmm. according to um, just scanning the eye. I know that um, Did you read there was that? a guy. His name was he. He uh, is Joey Mac. So Joey Mack is over Goody Nation, and he was telling me about his one of his his cohorts was the one who created that. Like yeah. this kind of stuff that will really help, you know, with with handheld devices to completely transform medicine. You know, that's that's stuff the future. That is that is amazing. <laughs> so cool. Any other questions for Yvonne? I just want to be her friend. That's all I'm saying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'm accepting applications if you. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. right thank you. Yvonne cohort is open. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Yvonne, for, for joining us. Thank you uh, for having me. Thank you. It was really fun. Our, thank our you. In the lineup is Karen. Karen, would you like to have a seat here? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Um, Hello. Basically here gathering stories. So we have uh, on the line, we have Ben Hong who is an amazing community guy. And we have Ari, who is um, one of our Vixen ladies and a very impressive in her own right. So um, you're here for our workshop and for the conference, I'm guessing as well. Yes. So cool. Are, and you're based in Atlanta? I am. Mm-hmm. Are you, and can you tell us a little about your journey into tech? You know, how this, all, <laughs> this mess all happened. <laughs> yeah, I've actually been working in tech for about 20 years. Wow. And um, I started... I actually had been working for eye doctors and a friend of mine said that he could, he could increase my salary by teaching me how to actually, it was teaching me a little bit of Unix. And so I started out as a support in a support position working nights. And so I started teaching myself programming, learning Perl. Mm -hmm. So, (laughs) and of course that was back when they were just looking for any warm bodies. So, That's where I'm coming from too. Yeah. I was like, if a monkey could do HTML and CSS, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So um, then I ended up moving into doing C plus plus and Java, and then then I moved into front end development. <laughs> so how was your um, how was your transition into the front end? Where what was your path? <laughs> I ended up I, I moved to a different company. It was a startup and. They started asking me to do some JSP type stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that had um, some JavaScript stuff in it. And so I started learning that at that point in time, and that was a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, more recently, uh, I moved to a new company that has been doing some React, and um, I've been getting into more modern JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. Are you enjoying learning React? Or are you at that level where you feel comfortable and everything's cool. <laughs> yes, I am. Oh, cool. I, I like it a lot. Yeah, so. that's neat. Yeah. And so here we are in a new workshop. Do you find similarities with the way React things are done and the way view things are done? Or? I think it is. Uh, there's a lot of similarities. <laughs> Definitely when in thinking about components and properties and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I did a little bit of Angular at one point in time too. And it seems like it's a little bit more similar to angular than it is react Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the kind of separation of concerns and yeah yes but i guess you can use um you can use some you know react style syntax you know if you want to within your view components but it's not you know obliged it's kind of interesting are you involved in the react community and i'm just wondering if we could do some comparisons of how how you're feeling (laughs) (laughs) i'm really not yet i've been trying to just catch up at my new job and and trying to learn kind of the whole fire hose of stuff yes. that I had to learn. <laughs> yeah. Is it for web development that React um, work that you're doing? Yes. Is yes. It, can I mention your company name on your badge? Yes. Home Depot. Home Depot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so there, there is a big React shop. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I always love to go to the websites and I have all the um, dev tools. So it's always interesting to me to see, you know, which one lights up when I go to which page. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So now I won't be surprised at Home Depot with React. Cool. Yeah. yeah. 
So um, are you enjoying the workshop? How's it going? I really am enjoying it. It's really been put together well, and oh, it's been you. a lot of fun to do. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's always a challenge to, to know, like, for a self-driven workshop, you know, how much to how much to talk, how much not to talk, how much to direct, you know. So we just try to direct traffic a little bit, you know, chapter by chapter on the hour, and, you know, everybody can go as best. I think you've been plowing through it pretty quick, right? I have. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, and everybody can just work at their own pace, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So for the view stuff, are you, um, do you think that you'll be using it in your job soon? This is probably company secrets. We don't like <laughs> Tell me more about the, uh, the Home Depot strategy. <laughs> <laughs> the inner workings. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's something that, um, that we would switch over to mm-hmm. only because we've already got a large code base with React, mm-hmm. but it's nice to have that. It's nice to have exposure to it so that it, it's something that I could propose at some point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, I can see where things could be easier. There are some things that could be easier, mm-hmm. but I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure. I would have to. Yeah, interesting. So I know that React is considered sort of less opinionated. Angular is extremely, you know, strict about you need to do X, Y, and Z. You know, yes, uh, and it works great for teams for that reason. Uh, do you, you must have a very solid architect who's like directing traffic within your code base? I'm guessing. Yes, we do have an architect who's trying to direct a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We also have um, UXers who are trying Mm -hmm. to help us at least try to keep the experience uniform. Mm -hmm. And then all of our leads tend to get together and make sure that everything works the same. So so the leads for each one of our teams, at least within our group, Mm -hmm. because Home Depot has a lot of uh, we are, we are a big shop. Yeah, yeah. So, um, all of our leads tend to get together within our group and make sure that everything's working well together and that we're following kind of the same patterns. So is there a, a style guide or a pattern library that you use? Or? Yes, we do. We have a style ga- guide, um, for all of Home Depot. And then within our group, we kind of have another style guide that we use. Do you use um, Storybook? I'm always really interested in people who are using Storybook for component, uh, like it's a component library to take care of all the decisions that you have to make. <laughs> we we do not. Oh, I really want to learn this thing, and I'm going to try to find someone who can like teach me this, teach me its ways. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. And 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 at Home Depot, are you working um, in the e-commerce experience, or in what aspect is your group? We're actually working in supply chain trying to improve the whole experience of ordering and delivering everything from delivering items to the stores and then delivering items to the customer. Oh, so wow. trying to speed that up. Yeah. So is there any IOT integration with this? Um, do you do any kind of sensing in terms of like when things are getting low or I, I don't know much about supply chain, how it works, <laughs> but I'm just wondering. Where we are not at this time, at least our group's not. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think they're doing it in other parts of the company. Oh yeah. So. And everyone's based here in Atlanta, pretty much. It's like a um, yes. physical place. Yeah, yeah uh, a lot of us are based in Atlanta, and then there's also a bunch of us in Austin. Oh, so yeah. cool. Any other questions that we? Are missing out on or? Yeah, uh, I'm actually just curious. Uh, what made you do the View Vixens workshop today? I was just interested in seeing um, other frameworks that were out there because I've done a little bit of Angular and I've done some React. I just kind of wanted to see what View looked like. Cool. <laughs> Good fun. Anything else? Then you're. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. It's uh, it's always fun to, it's not un- atypical for us to have really experienced React developers coming in. And I'm always curious mm-hmm. if it's okay, <laughs> if you're feeling yeah. comfortable and confident. So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, thanks. Thanks. Looks like that may be our interview loop for the day. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So Chris is out getting some people. How's your factor tech so far? Is it like, wait, is it like this is the workshop day and then it starts tomorrow? Yep. So this is workshops. Um, I think there's maybe five or six workshops going on all at once. Very uh, cool. So that's nice. And um, and then tomorrow and uh, the day after will be talks, talks, talks. Awesome. Yeah. Which means I need to run slides <laughs> at some point. <laughs> 
Well, now I'm curious. What are you giving a talk on, Jen? Ah, I'm giving my uh, mini bar challenge talk, which is the one I gave in the view Amsterdam. <laughs> so I'm the one who uh, who brings the nip bottles in, in my suitcase to always. <laughs> like, so, nice. So my, of course you do. My kids are like, <laughs> yeah, that's what they all say. It's for a demo, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, at this point, I'm kind of known as like everyone's a lit auntie, you know. But I'd have to agree with that assessment. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, you never know makes I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's a fun talk, but um, it's interesting since I switch jobs. It'll be interesting to see if I also switch the focus of the talk a little bit. Maybe don't do the machine learning uh, locally, which is what I which is what I did for for the the base yeah. of the talk but maybe do some of it on Azure servers. So since, you know, we're supposed to be putting Azure through its paces, there's a lot, there is a lot there that we can tinker with. So Yeah, oddly enough, I was, I was just thinking about that on my way in today. Like, wow, so if you are like a developer advocate and you have a talk scheduled and you change jobs in between, what do you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this is why you don't want to get, like, get too tightly connected to a particular product. For me, I'm tightly connected to an open source product, so it's a little bit less fraught. But um, I don't think you'd want to be giving talks about paid products. You know, you'd have to. <laughs> at that point, you might want to just like gracefully change your talker back out <laughs> of a conference. But for me, it's it's worked out okay. And Microsoft's very supportive of um, the commitments that I already have. But for the That's future, awesome. I actually am cooking up. I'll spill a secret. I'm cooking up a new talk. Ooh. This new talk is going to be involving machine learning and interpretive dance. Oh my God! Yes, get ready. <laughs> get ready. And it will be audience participation in large <gasps> numbers. <laughs> I like it. I so, like it. Half half stack conference in New York City is going to be the first one, and then we'll see. <laughs> that is so great. Yes, well, that's the beauty of of these kind of things, and. I appreciate that people are indulgent and allow me to do my weird philosophical and artsy fartsy <laughs> talks. You know, I loved it at UConn. I thought it was great. That's good fun. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> cool. Well, I think this might be the end of the road for our chit chat. I have one more question for you, Jen. Mm-hmm. What have you been most surprised by in the journey of the Dixon so far? Oh, I've been surprised at the. Um, Knock on wood, lack of trolling and lack of um, anger <laughs> at what we're trying to do. I mean, um, I, I don't know why it is. I, I would have expected to get angry messages from, given what you know, where we are with the internet nowadays. But um, it's been people have been honestly quite quite nice, and I, I really appreciate that. So it's been really good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So Chris is back. Yay. Hey, how are we all doing? What did I miss? Everything. Right. Just give me a recap. Just give me a recap of <laughs> everything. Well, Yvonne is amazing. And mm-hmm. Karen is amazing. Well, I, I knew these and things. And there we go. Yeah. So. <laughs> so should we wrap up and do some picks? Yeah, Actually, the- first, before we do picks, have you talked about, like, where people, I know you talked a little bit at the beginning, but, like, where can people learn more about View Vixens? Where can they, like, people were talking about a Slack earlier. That sounds pretty fun. And mm-hmm. where can they learn more about that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, we are basically centralized at viewvixens.org, and all of our social links are at the bottom right of that website. So um, look at the bottom, look for the little icons on the right, and you'll find an invitation to our Slack channel and our Twitter account. So I manage the the Twitter, so apologies for any uh, weird stuff coming out of that. We're also on Insta, although I haven't figured out, I'm not an Insta guru. I'm trying to figure this one out. (laughs) We're on Facebook. Um, But basically, Slack is your best bet to find us. We're basically always on and uh, for the most up-to-date meetups and events, we have a section for workshops on the front page of the website. And right under that are all of our meetups, which are kindly hosted on meetup.com with the help of Ben. So thank you, Ben. <laughs> Anytime. And, and what is the best way to support View Vixens if you know, people like what you're doing? Well, the best way to support us is to come to a workshop and hang out with us and... Uh, and just tell us, give us feedback about our content and uh, contribute. Many ways to contribute. Uh, if you'd like to, if you find things on the on the website, you know, do, do a PR. We accept PRs. If you are adventure someone, come on Slack and ping me. I may ask for help with something. Like recently, we had a community person do that meetup integration. So uh, she did a PR, Natalia, and I looked at it and that was the thing. We also have a Patreon. And I'm 
very torn about whether I want to move to a GitHub support um, mm. thing because mm. there are a lot of good reasons to do this, but it's terrible yeah. to tear down a Patreon that's working. You know, if it ain't, I always believe yeah. that if it ain't broke, I ain't gonna fix it. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> but then there is that first year of like they'll match all your <laughs> yeah, donations up to five thousand. <laughs> I did apply and we'll see what happens. If, mm-hmm. if, yeah, But the Patreon is great. And then we have um, levels of sponsorship. So if you're a company who would like to sponsor us, we are, like we said at the beginning, 501c3 tax deductible. Um, so that's that's another fun thing. And yeah, we, we really appreciate everyone's support, whether monetary or just, hey, we like you on Twitter. That's awesome. <laughs> great. This episode is sponsored by Sentry.io. Recently, I came across a great tool for tracking and monitoring problems in my apps. Then I asked them if they wanted to sponsor the show and allow me to share my experience with you. Sentry provides a terrific interface for keeping track of what's going on with my app. It also tracks releases so I can tell if what I deployed makes things better or worse. They give you full stack traces and as much information as possible about the situation when the error occurred to help you track down the errors. Plus, one thing I love, you can customize the context provided by Sentry. So... If you're looking for specific information about the request, you can provide it. It automatically scrubs passwords and secure information, and you can customize the scrubbing as well. Finally, it has a user feedback system built in that you can use to get information from your users. Oh, and I also love that they support open source to the point where they actually open source Sentry if you want to self-host it. Use the code devchat at sentry.io to get two months free on Sentry's small plan. That's code devchat at sentry.io. So for picks, who would like to go first? Ben, I see you. I see you grinning. You got some. All right, I will go first. Yeah. So recently, I came back from a trip from Taiwan, and uh, I needed something to watch on the plane, and so I started watching, uh, rewatching some of Avatar: Last Airbender, which is phenomenal. That's a great stuff. If you haven't, I I tried Legend of Korra, and I'm still like, I got two seasons in. I'm like, kind of mixed about it, but like, Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, definitely a phenomenal one. Um, that like got brought up with all the Game of Thrones ending. Everyone was like. What's a good, like, long arc with a great enemy? Yeah. Anyways, Avatar Last Airbender, if you haven't checked it out. And my second pick, which I actually just remembered, is Netflix just released Always Be My Maybe, which is with Ali Wong and Randall Park. Uh, it's a rom-com, Asian-American rom-com, and uh, fantastic. Uh, they did a really good job on it on Netflix. So, yeah, those are my picks for the week. <laughs> great. Ari, would you like to go next? Feels like I don't have a choice, so okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh... I've been watching a lot of TV lately, so I have two TV shows. Um, First is Chernobyl on HBO, the miniseries. So powerful. I haven't watched the last episode yet, but Um, oh my God. Um, Is it about like Chernobyl Chernobyl. actually happening? Yeah. Yeah. While it's happening? Like the chronicle of, it it actually starts at the the night that it happened Mm. and moves forward in time. So it really explores the aftermath of Chernobyl. Mm -hmm. If you don't want a really amazing mood ruined, I don't recommend watching it. So God, it's one of those documentaries. <laughs> yes. Be prepared. Um, it's somber. I'll leave it at that. Um, it's on Netflix, did you say? It's on HBO. Oh, okay. And then my second pick is on Netflix, Dead to Me with Christina Applegate and Linda Cardinelli. It's not what you're going to expect. I was expecting more of just a pure dark comedy, but it's definitely more of a dark dramedy. Interesting. But it's amazing. I can't wait for the second season, which apparently there will be one. So You stole my pick. Yes! <laughs> oh. oh, I'm so sorry. Benefits of going first. <laughs> okay. Well, how about, how about you, Jen? Do you have any picks for us today? Um, I've got a TV pick as well. It's on Hulu. If you are not watching Harlots, you're missing out. There are two seasons already out there. It's my absolute favorite thing on TV, which tells you a lot about me. <laughs> But it's a surprisingly feminist affirming show about prostitutes in um, the 17th century London. It's, it's hilarious. Uh, season three should be coming out, and I just, I'm just i just waiting for this to happen. <laughs> and then I have a technical pick here. I don't know if anyone's taken a look at ZDog. So the URL is zzz.dog. I'm waiting to be able to use this with Vue. I think with, it's, it's for round, flat, designer-friendly, pseudo 3D engine for Canvas and SVG. I feel like this might break the ice for me in terms of trying to do animations, which I'm terrible at. Nice. But I feel like I want to try this thing because it seems so fun and cool. <laughs> now I really feel like I have to try it because, Ben, you picked it. Week. Oh, did you? Okay. Chris. Yeah. Oh, Chris. I didn't <laughs> want to be did, but now yeah. I'm really feeling the pressure. I feel like I have to try it now. So I'm going to try this. <laughs> yeah, Dave Everybody's just doing it great software. <laughs> Okay, so for my picks, yeah, Dead to Me, thanks a lot for that. But it's so um, good, right? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah I, I am really enjoying it. And Christina Applegate and uh, what's her face? Linda Cardinelli. Linda Cardinelli, the one yeah. whose name I didn't know, but who's also Diana. very, very talented. Like both of them, great comedy actors. Like, yeah. they, they do such a great job and they have a great dynamic together. And it's also like pretty dark and serious and there's some, there's some good drama in there. Such fun. And, and also like a little bit dark, <laughs> but or more Sorry. than a little dark. <laughs> and then my other pick, of course, is just a uh, few vixens. Thank wear. you, Jen. <laughs> thank you, Jen. And thank you all the vixens who have who've been on today, sharing their stories and uh, just making it easier for women to get into development and making this community a place that I want to be. Awesome. Appreciate it. Thank you for all of your support. We really appreciate it. <laughs> You're the best. All right. Well, until next week, enjoy the view, everybody. Bandwidth for this segment is provided by Cashfly, the world's fastest CDN. Deliver your content fast with Cashfly. Visit C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com to learn more. Mm-hmm.